Hello architects and welcome to another video on building applications on AWS using sustainable architecture patterns. Have you been watching my recent video on storage first APIs or maybe you're building asynchronous applications and just wondering how the heck do I get a response back to my caller if everything is asynchronous? And that's what we're gonna have a look at in this video. We're gonna explore how you can get responses back from your asynchronous APIs, especially if they are built using the storage first pattern. And in fact, there's three different options, maybe even four, depending on how you look at it, that you have in terms of getting responses back. And let's dive straight in and take a look at the first one. And the first one is probably the simplest one that we have. Now just to a quick reminder on the actual application setup that we have. So we have this create order Lambda function, which is going to take a request in from an API, store that in an SQS queue, and then this Lambda function is going to pick it up, process it, and actually create the order in a DynamoDB table, and then publish a create order created event. Now, if we're the caller making the call to this API, you probably want to know if that order has been created successfully, right? So by far the simplest way to do this is simply to create a second endpoint on your API for which you can poll for messages. So as well as our create order handler, you've also got this get order handler. And the get order handler is a really simple API endpoint that's just going to retrieve the order from our DynamoDB database. So if we flick over to Postman now, we have our API here. We can make a request uh, to the post endpoint to create a new order. And we get back an identifier here. And this identifier we get back, we can take this over to the get endpoint and you can make that same request against your get endpoint. And here we have the order. Now if I do this really quickly, hit the post endpoint, grab my identifier, quickly flick over to the get endpoint, paste that in and hit that get endpoint again. So that's happened quickly enough. So you can see, even with this asynchronous API, the record actually gets to our database very quickly. And in fact, it's got to go through a step function workflow into SQS, the Apollo has got to pick it up from SQS and store it in the database. And that all happens quicker than I can flick between these two tabs. So this is one way that you can check the status of a message. Now, of course, you might be thinking now, James, that means I'll need to send lots of additional requests to my backend. If that asynchronous process takes a minute, two minutes, this polling, the polling system is going to be sending these poll messages over and over again. So how can we make this a little bit more real time or a little bit more push based instead of poll based? Well, one way we can do that is to use this idea of response channels. So we had in my previous video on different types of message channels, talking about point to point channels and publish subscribe channels. There's a video in the description if you want to see that video. And we can actually use a point to point channel to facilitate this message coming back and you can implement that nice and easily. So I've actually, um, if I just bring the AWS console now, the step function workflow that is actually managing the unique ID generation and the storage of my um, message into the SQS queue you can actually add an additional step to that. So as well as sending the message to my create order queue, I'm also going to check that if the payload that comes in to my, um, to my, into my API has a response channel property. And if it has a response channel property, I'm going to send a message onto that specified response channel. So that I can let the caller know that something has happened. So if we, if you come back over to Postman now and I go back to this post request and I just undo my message here. So you see, I've got, you've got this response channel URL and then you can also specify a correlation ID and this just allows you to link messages together. So I can now make a call to that endpoint. Everything succeeds the same. Of course, you can still grab the get endpoint there and we can just check that, of course, that that message has made it into the to the database and it has but now you can also go over to back to the AWS console and if we go off to the SQS console you can see I've got this response channel 
And my response channel has now has two messages in it. And if I just poll for the messages in my channel and you look one, three, two, six, five, four, eight, nine. And if we look back here, one, two, three, six, two, five, four, whatever, random number. <laughs> and you can see now that that has happened real time. So if this was us now wanting to know as a caller when that message has been processed or acknowledged, you can simply poll a queue of your own making as opposed to needing to poll with a HTTP call. And the SQS integration from Step Functions supports doing this cross account. So you can actually, if you are building applications and you've got different workloads in different AWS accounts, well, you can support that with this pattern. You can send these messages back across the boundaries of an AWS account. The important thing being, of course, making sure that you specify a correlation ID of some kind so that you can link between the message that you send and the message that comes back into your response channel. And when you think about sustainability and efficient use of compute, only doing work when you need to do work, of course, this is a much more, much improved pattern over that of polling an endpoint just in case the request might be there. A couple of other options that you have. The, the third option is you can actually leverage the event that gets published. Um, so if we look at the, this create order handler, um, after the message has been stored in the database, you then publish that event. So you can see here you're publishing an order created event once the message has been successfully stored in the database, streamed out the back end of the database, and then we publish the event. And you can actually use that to, as a sender to listen to. So you can listen for order created events. If your system hears the order created event, receives that, then you can maybe send a notification back to the customer. This is very similar to the way Amazon.com works, in fact, in that you submit an order. And if your payment details are incorrect or something like that, the, the web page you submit on will say confirmed. But then a minute, two minutes, three minutes later, you'll receive an email to your inbox saying, I'm sorry, there's been a problem with your payment, blah, 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 put a new, put a new card in. So that notification back to an email address or a phone number, maybe by text message, that's really useful if you're integrating with you know, a customer facing system where you can send an email back and then there's a human at the other end who can then go off and read that message. So that's another option that you have is to actually send a notification back to whoever's calling the customer, if it's an order processing system, for example. And then the final option that you have, and one that I've not actually implemented here, but I wanted to talk about briefly, is the usage of WebSockets. Now, WebSockets, if you're not familiar, is a way to do bi-directional communication between a caller and a receiver potentially hosted in AWS. And Amazon API Gateway supports building WebSockets APIs, and that then creates a persistent connection between your caller and your sender. So you can send the message across the WebSocket channel, pro do the processing in the back end, and then send a response back across that same channel once the order has been completed successfully. Of course, that is arguably the most efficient because the connections there are waiting to go, but you get that real time response as soon as the message has been processed. Now, of course, you've got now four different patterns here for how you can facilitate this communication back to your caller and which one you use will depend entirely on the use case that you have. The polling based, the simple poll based build may be perfectly good in a lot of use cases that you have. If you know that the processing always takes exactly one minute or just about one minute, you can actually make your poller really efficient and it keeps things nice and simple. Inter-service communication or um, communication between different teams in your business, using the response channel based approach can be really powerful because it allows you as the sender just to say, when you're done doing your work, just send a response onto this channel. And you can actually extend this further. You could make that so that every single um, message that the order system processes sends that back on the same channel. That channel endpoint can be passed throughout the entire order processing process. Every time something changes, a message gets sent back to that response channel. So that can be really useful if you're building inter-service integrations within your organization. And then WebSockets and sending notifications back to callers by email and text, them kinds of patterns are more useful if you are integrating with a, a human on the other end of the on the other end of the workflow because 
things like sending emails, sending texts, having some bi-directional connection to a web browser, that's something that's very likely going to have a person sat on the other end of it. So that's four different patterns that you can have for setting up this communication back to your calling system. Of course, as always, if you've liked this video, please like and please subscribe. If you'd like to hear any other topics being covered around architecture, event-driven systems, serverless, .NET, Rust, then please reach out and let me know on social media and I will see you all next time.